So in that case, you would think, well, if it's community property, we should just split this thing down the middle and each of us spouses should get an allocation of an equal amount to our social security benefit thing. That's what you would kind of think. And so I'd say, okay, one way you might be able to do that is to assign it not to a taxpayer in the software. We're going to say now it's, it's joint. By the way, if I assigned it to the spouse, then you'd have the same thing, but in reverse. So now you've got the same, the same 1040 here, the 100,000 flowing through, everything is going to be the same, except that on the schedule C, it's now being applied to Jane Anderson instead of Neo Anderson. And all the, all the benefits are gonna to go to Jane's social security number. If you then say it's joint, which you have to be careful to be able to make sure you can do depending on where you are located, then we have the one schedule C here once again, but it says up top now it's Neo and Jane Anderson and then everything else is the same. It flows through the, to the 1040. It's all the same for income tax, income tax evasion. purposes. But when I go to the schedule SE now, I have two of them, Neo and Jane. So, so now that nice and easily allows me to populate one schedule C while still being allowed to have two self-employment tax calculations, which the total should still come to the same total but now for their particular benefits so that when they get their benefits, it should be allocated to them separately. And that could be a big deal when you're trying to kind of maximize your social security benefits that would be coming out at the end. I got a different check mark here. This is 14, one, 14 130. If I go back on over here and I say it was for a single taxpayer it's 14 129. So it's pretty, so obviously again, this because it's a flat rate that we're using, this one's coming out to be the same. That's the total taxes. It's just being allocated between the two and, and it's a rounding difference. That's why it turned red, but it's still 14,130. So that looks good. That's to be expected. So that's one way that you can do that. Now, if you're not able to do that, then another thing you might be able to do is have a qualified uh, joint venture or to have a partnership return, right? So if you and your spouse each materially participate as the only members of a jointly owned and operated business and you file a joint return for tax year, you make a joint uh, election to be treated as a qualified joint venture instead of a partnership for the tax year. Making this election will allow you to avoid the complexity of Form 1065, but still give each spouse credit for Social Security earnings on which the retirement benefits are based. So to do that, you, you may be able to basically make two Schedule C's allocating the proper amounts to each Schedule C. So for example, to make this election, you must divide all items of income, gain, loss, deduction and credit attributable to the business between you and your spouse in accordance with your respective interest in the venture. So if I was to go back on over and say, notice that this one split it 50-50, as we can see here. Now, if you were trying to maximize your social security benefits or whatnot, it might be more beneficial to have one or the other spouse allocated more of the income depending on their other information with regards to putting money into the social security and you can try to plan out what would be best best for social security but if the agreement was something other than 50 50 then then you might you might be able to use the joint venture kind of system to allocate it uh differently to allocate the income differently or a partnership if you use a partnership you have to file a separate return and then you can use the allocation methods to allocate whatever the allocation agreement was whether it be 50, 50, 60, 40, or whatever. And then, or you might be able to file in essence two schedule C's, which might look something like this. I would have to take this schedule C, this is kind of tedious. You'd have to say, okay, I'm gonna say, let's add another one. And let's say the first, this one is gonna be for tax, the spouse. And the first one's gonna be for the taxpayer. And then I'm gonna say, this is going to be 120 let's say we'll take uh we'll take well let's just make it easy and make this a hundred thousand and and just to give an example so the whole hundred thousand and let's say that it's going to be 60 40 
So let's say we're gonna take that 100,000 minus 40,000, which will leave us 60,000. And then on the second one, it would be the same information. Low information. And I won't repopulate all the information, but I'm gonna say this is for the spouse. And the bottom line is that this would be the 100,000. And then I'm gonna take minus 60,000 of it which is gonna leave us 40. So that comes up to the 100,000 again, right? And then if I go back on over here, now I've got a Schedule C, but now I've got two Schedule Cs, one for uh, one spouse at the 60,000, the other for the, the other spouse at 40,000, and they're both allocated to the two spouses, and that would total up to the, the, schedule, the schedule SE then. I have two Schedule SEs, which I tried to differentiate now to allocate based on whatever our, our agreement is in a similar way that we might do in a partnership that might be different than just 50-50, which may not have a big impact or any impact possibly on the federal income taxes, but could have an impact on the social security benefits <laughs> that you would get, right? That's kind of the whole mess that has been created here that we are find ourselves dealing with. So if I go into then page one, then you still have the 100,000 here. And on page two, we still have the same social security that has been calculated, social security, Medicare, the self-employment tax, but now we have a different allocation based on based on the, the two schedule C's. So if you're gonna make that election, you wanna you know, do some more research on that and think about what your best option would be. So if you're a married couple, and you're in a community property state, you might be able to do the easy thing, one Schedule C, splitting everything down the middle, which means that your allocations to the Social Security will be split down the middle. Uh, or if you wanna do more complex planning for the amount you're gonna get from Social Security benefits possibly, because, and you wanna allocate that differently or for whatever reason, uh, big, or, or you have a partnership agreement that's different than 50-50 or you're not in a community property state, you can think about maybe setting up a partnership flow through entity, which allows you then to, to have a breakout that's other than 50-50 if you so choose, but you have to do another tax return and use this K-1s that will then flow in here. And then you can use the K-1s to do the allocation, which will then drive the social security, the self-employment uh, calculations, or you might be able to do this method with basically two Schedule C's, possibly looking into a qualified joint venture situation, which is tedious, because then you have to basically populate two Schedule C's in accordance with whatever allocation uh, you're using. And, uh, and I've never actually done that because I'm in a community property state, but that's, so you, that's another option that you can basically drill down on and look into and see if that would be easier than, say, a partnership return in that situation.